Do you ever look at a beauty tool and you look at the price and you're like, oh my gosh, like who in the world would spend that much money on a beauty tool? Today's video is gonna be a little bit different. We are gonna be talking about outrageously expensive beauty tools where there are much less expensive options for that particular use. But the most important thing about this video is I'm gonna tell you my experience with these products and whether I think it's actually worth upgrading to the more expensive cost one or if you can probably just use a less expensive one. So we're gonna start with, through my day, what I would normally use first. And this this one's a little bit, it's a beauty tool, but it's not quite a beauty tool. If this one's boring to you and you already know this, there's skip aheads down below to each section. So this one I feel like has been very important to me and that's why I'm mentioning it. And it's my toothbrush. <laughs> So this is the new one that my husband just bought me for Christmas, but I had one of these. I lost it about a year ago on my road trip. And since then I had been using this one here. This is the Oral-B one you can just buy at the grocery store. So basically the idea behind this is what you do is you press this little button and it turns on, there's two different speeds and the brushes every three months or so I change these out. Now this is the thing, I've always really liked electric toothbrushes since they first came out, but I didn't really see a difference between getting this or this. And when I lost the, my other one on my road trip, I started buying these for the entire year. Well, I got a checkup in the beginning of December and the dental hygienist was like, Jen, it's like, I've never seen your teeth look so placky. <laughs> <laughs> like ever. I don't know what word she used. I don't think she used the word placky, but you know what I mean? Like they were just grosser than they normally are. And I was like, I think I need to change my toothbrush back. I think that's the problem because I've been using one of these for years. So very thankful to now have this back. I do think it makes a huge difference. If you aren't in the market for one of the more expensive ones, if you just want to get one of these again, I don't think they're, I think they're better than the manual toothbrushes, the ones you just scrub normally. But um, I feel like this this one is the best one of the electric toothbrushes that you can buy at the grocery store. It's just the Oral-B one. Uh, it says cross action on the back. These are really good, but it's definitely not as good as these. I definitely think this is worth the investment. That's just my opinion. You can say all you want, this is not a beauty product, but I feel like taking care of your teeth is kind of a beauty product. Number one, with the whole breath thing, with the color of your teeth, and then also just being able to keep your teeth through good dental hygiene. So for me, this is a beauty product, but let's move on to things that are a little more traditional. We're gonna do hair products next. Now the hair products I want to show you, I actually filmed before I put my makeup on because I wanted to show you how they work. Uh, so I took a shower, I came in and I did, uh, I kind of did little demos of these two products for you. So we're going to get into that right now. While I was prepping to film this video, my hair dried just a little bit, <laughs> but this is the hair dryer. I wanna show you how it works as far as the light and everything and how it actually blows my hair dry. So uh, as you can see, there's a button here that you push up and then the hair dryer turns on. If you look here, you can see there's a couple of different buttons here. So there's three lights here for the blower strength and then there's three lights here for the heat. Let me show you again. I'm going to turn it back on. Hopefully you can see now it's got the three lights on there and then the three lights there for the different levels of heat. This here is a cold blast of air here uh, for people that like to do that with their hair. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put on the different, I don't know how to call them diffusers. I don't know what these things are called, but they're just magnetic and you click it on like that. And I prefer to put it this way rather than this way. I don't know, I feel like it blows my hair dry better. So let me uh, just show you how that looks. And you can see it's not terribly loud compared to most hair dryers. Hopefully that's coming across well on, uh, on camera and sometimes I do section my hair off and blow it dry but since I'm doing this demo I'm not doing like the whole like with the curling brush and all that stuff so there's this one and then there's one that's just a little bit smaller that comes with it and then you've got this giant diffuser this thing is huge I notice that this does not dry my hair any faster than a regular hair dryer any you know my hair dryer I think before this cost maybe $30 something like that it's just like a white plastic I don't even know what kind I don't feel like it adds any extra shine or anything but it is cool I mean I I honestly don't think this is worth $400 but 
I like it. I can't say I don't like it. I really like it. I'm going to keep it. But would I recommend this for $400? For me, no. Uh, <laughs> even though, I mean, it feels like when you put your hands in one of those Dyson hand dryers that you find at restaurants and things, but on your head. And it feels good. I like that it's not very loud. Uh, but do I see anything magical happening with my hair when I use this? Absolutely not. Now that we've gone over the drying part, let's go into the next product and we're going to style my hair. Normally I would spend more time on actually blowing my hair dry and it would look better at this point, but you know, I did it real quick. So now we're gonna fix it with the Beach Waver. Okay, so this one is the bigger one that I have. This one is called the S1.25. Let me show you the concept behind it. So basically what you do, is there is a fast and slow button over here on the side. I have mine always set to slow because the fast is too fast for me. And then what you do is you can turn your hair onto it. I know it seems gimmicky, hang on with me. You turn your hair with it and then you can turn it the other way. And then once you're done, you can hit this home button and it brings it back so that you can set it down easily. Now, it also has a heat down here at the bottom and it takes about, I don't know, three or four minutes to heat up to the 350 degrees, which is kind of its automatic setting. I used to put it on 370, but when my hair started really thinning out, I realized that 370 was too hot. I think 350 is perfect for my hair. So let me show you how I use this what I do is I just take a section off here and the very first piece I always want to spin away from me. So I put this down here on the bottom and then sometimes pieces fall out and that's okay. And then I just spin it and then I count to six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then I let it go and I have a curl. Boop. And then for the next one, what I'll do is I'll grab another piece. I know that I'm not a hair person, okay? I'm, I'm just not. I'm not a hair person. This is what I do because this is what works for me. Then I make it go the other way for the second curl. And I go like this. Me, me, me. And I try to get it to kind of go up. And one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, I used to take a bunch of time to kind of hold it while it um, while it was cooling, which I think would be ideal, but I haven't had a problem with this holding my curls without doing that, so I kind of abandoned that practice. Um, but you can see what pretty curls it makes. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, finish this side, and I just do four sections on each side. And again, alternating which way I go. Do, 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 do. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then I just hit the home button so that I can set it down. And one thing though that you have to be really careful of that I don't like this uh, is that when you're pushing these buttons, sometimes you can accidentally hit the home button and your hair starts rotating in a way you don't want it to rotate. So at that point I immediately hit the little clicker thing and it lets my hair go. Uh, but that scared me a couple of times accidentally hitting this home button when I'm trying to turn it here. So I've got one more curl on this side and then we're gonna do the tighter curls on the other side. I let them completely cool before I finger them through. All right, I'm gonna let the other curling iron heat up and I'll be right back. So now I've got the smaller one heated up. This one is an S1. This one I feel like gets caught in my hair just a little bit more, uh, but I'm not hating on it. I still really, really like it a lot. Uh, this one I've had a little bit longer and it does the same exact thing, except it's just smaller. When I first turned this on, I did look to see the temperatures on here. So we've got between 290 Fahrenheit all the way up to 410. Fahrenheit that that's what this one goes to. All right, so let me demonstrate this one so you can see the difference in the curl. And I know there's plenty of ways that are probably much more professional for me to section off my hair and everything for curling, but I'm not a professional. <laughs> so I do what's easy for me. And you can see the curl is much, much tighter with this one. Because ideally, I should probably be taking two pieces from the top and two pieces from the bottom, but you know, I do what works for me and this is the easiest, most functional way. I don't have a mirror here, so I'm doing this without looking. One, two, three, four, five, six. So you can see, I, hopefully you'll be able to see the curls are much tighter. And I'm gonna go ahead and do, it looks like I only have one piece left over here. Mm -hmm. 
I'm gonna give that a second to cool and then I'm going to brush out my hair so that you can see the difference between the two sides as far as the curl goes. My hair is now completely cool, so I'm just gonna kind of finger through these and then finger through this side. And that's how the curls look fingered out. And hopefully you can see the difference between the sides. I know I can see a huge difference. My rolly chair is rolling backwards and I don't want it to. Overall, I absolutely love the beach waver. <laughs> I really, really, really love it. I do think it is 100% worth the price for these. I've used so many different curling irons. I remember when Numi was huge on YouTube. If you remember Numi, I had a Numi. I had a bunch of other different styling wands and curling irons and things like that. I have seriously never had a curling iron curl my hair the way that this thing does. I don't know what kind of magic they put in this, whether like a fairy comes by and you know gives it some kind of magical powers. I don't know what they're doing over at Beach Waver, but these things are seriously the best curling irons I have ever used. I would love to know your experiences with the Beach Waver down below. I've never heard anybody say anything negative about this product. The only thing I could imagine being scary and tricky is the whole turning thing, but it does. you can stop it whenever you want. It's not like um, the ones that suck your hair up where it just kind of sucks it up until it's done sucking it up and there's not much you can do about it till it's done. This one, you can turn it off at any point. You can un clamp it at any point, um, but it definitely has scared me a couple of times where I felt like my hair was kind of stuck in it, especially when I realized that the 370 was too hot. I found my hair was sticking to the curling iron and it really freaked me out. So I, um, because it was burning. So, so once I turned it down to 350, it's been wonderful for me. Um, but those are the only in, in any way negative things, but I think that if you know what you're doing with hair stuff, I feel like you're going to love these. They do have a pro version of these. I don't have the pro one. Oops. Did not mean to do that. I don't have the pro one because there are, I think, about $200 for the pro one. I think that they're longer, so if you have really long hair, you may want to invest in the pro one. I've personally never tried those. All I can vouch for is these two, and I really, really like them a lot. All right, we're going to go ahead and zoom out, and we're going to talk about the very last product, which is the simple human mirror that I get asked questions about all the time. The last product I want to show you is a product that I get asked about all the time. And if you've been in my live chats, especially if you've been there live, you know every single week in live chat, at least a couple people ask me about this. And this is my simple human mirror. Uh, this is a really expensive mirror. It's 200 bucks uh, and it is fabulous. <laughs> I hate to say it, but it's really, really, really good. Um, it's It's got a light, as you can see, and it's got this sensor up here. It definitely has some drawbacks, and the first one I wanna tell you is that it does turn off very quickly. So I'm gonna flip this around so you can see how fast it turns off if you're not directly in front of the mirror. I really don't like that. See, it's off. I've heard that some of the models have a switch on the bottom. I don't know if that is true, but mine does not have a switch. I've also heard some extend. Mine does not extend. I actually tried to extend this one because people were swearing to me it does, but then I exposed the wires inside and realized, nope, it does not extend. It does charge through a uh, through a wall charger. The cord is very short. I don't like that, but the actual function of the mirror is stinking amazing. Uh, the mirror I was using before this had lights. It was like, I'll put a picture of it right here, at least one that's similar if I can't find the exact picture, but it had the lights on the side, and I felt like it lit the mirror more than it lit my face, where I feel like this, like my face, is lit up and I can see everything so well in the magnification. The magnification is perfect and I, I even though I know I'm not the best at makeup I don't have to tell me every single time I do something not people always tell me you know how terrible I am at makeup. Okay I do feel like this mirror has improved my skills very much improved them since I was using just the regular mirror at, or using that other lit up mirror. I can really see what I'm doing but what I usually do is I have a regular magnification, no magnification mirror also to kind of see my face as a whole. I feel like this is really only good for like doing detail kind of work, but when you want to start doing blush and things like that, I feel like I need a regular not magnified mirror for that. So I use both mirrors as I'm getting ready usually. One thing I always recommend if you're looking to invest in this mirror is check out Bed Bath & Beyond because they do have those 20% off coupons all the time and you can use your 20% off coupon on one of these if you're looking to invest in it. So for me, this is a 100% game changer 
your definite recommend. I think it is totally worth the 200 bucks for me personally as someone that does makeup videos for a living. If you're just trying to get ready for work and it doesn't really matter like the precise application and everything, maybe you don't need it. But if you really want to get, you know, be able to really see what you're doing, highly, highly recommend this. At this point, I want to turn the conversation over to you. If you've tried any of these products, I would love to know your thoughts down in the comments below because we are the collective brain of makeup awesomeness and we work together to make sure we are not buying crap and we are buying things that are worth the investment. Just like with Amazon reviews and things like that, I feel like it's important to get more than one perspective. So if you are thinking about purchasing something that I showed today, definitely make sure you're checking out the comments below, uh, you know, just get more than one opinion on what's happening. I love, love, love reading the comments in my videos because I always learn something. And if you're not already subscribed and you're not part of the collective brain, you can do that by clicking the subscribe button down below. And people have been telling me they haven't been getting notified when my videos are going live. So you can always hit that notification notification bell and that gives you a little extra possibility that they may let you know when I release a new video. Hopefully you're getting notifications. I hope, but if you're not, that's a way you can make sure you get notifications when I upload a new video. And I want to thank you so much for watching. Mad love to you and I will see you in a video soon. Bye!